Hello, this is an introductory video to the channel Think Like a Physicist. First, I'd like to say welcome. Um, in this short video, we'll try to give some idea of what this channel is about, what kind of stuff will be on it, and what it hopes to accomplish. If you have any questions about this video or about any of the videos in this channel, feel free to leave uh, your questions in the comments below. If you'd like to know when new videos on this channel are released, please hit the subscribe button below. And um, okay, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start by posing the question, what is science? Science is the practice of accumulating information about the universe by forming and testing hypotheses. But I'm also going to put this in a somewhat more grandiose way. Science is how we figure out what reality is. We observe natural phenomena, we try to come up with explanations of those phenomena, and then devise ways to test those explanations. We perform tests, and we keep hypotheses that succeed, and we abandon ones that fail. Then we make more observations of natural phenomena, and the process continues. As science is presented to the general public, it's easy to get the impression that science is basically the practice of accumulating facts. Scientists make some discovery about nature, and they tell the world what they found. So science might just look like a long list of discoveries. This is actually a pretty terrible description of what science does. A more accurate description would be to point out that scientists make models to try to explain different phenomena. Then they test those models with experiments. If a model's predictions agree with the results of the experiments, then they keep that model around. But if the model's predictions don't agree with the results of experiments, then the scientists need to find a new model. While this description is better, it's still too simplistic. For one thing, how do we prove a model false? This might sound like a silly question. If the model predicts one thing and observation gives another, haven't we disproven the model? The issue is, however, that experiments aren't perfect. If we measure some quantity, that measurement has an uncertainty. It has an error bar on it. So we don't just say that Model A is false. Instead, we have to quantify how much Model A disagrees with observation. When that disagreement is sufficiently high, then we can consider Model A disproven. Also, sometimes we find that a model passes many tests with flying colors, maybe for decades, but then eventually it fails. In some cases, we understand why the model failed a particular test. Maybe the model made approximations that we know weren't valid for those testing conditions. If so, the model may still be useful for some situations, like in conditions where we know that those approximations are still valid. In these cases, we don't necessarily abandon the model entirely. Perhaps it was a nice, simple, easy-to-use model, and we may keep it around for cases in which it is approximately valid. Now, in order to deal with this, science has constructed a lot of tools that we can use to quantify how well models agree or disagree with observation. These tools are important to know how much confidence you should put in the veracity of a particular model. In fact, even if you have a model that has passed all of the experimental tests that you've managed to throw at it, it's still important to know just how well it has been tested so that you can still have some idea of how the model could fail in future tests. And if you're using a model that's known to not be valid in all situations, it's important to know if that model is okay for the scenarios that you're interested in. Okay, so these skills are important if you're a scientist, but what about everybody else? Well, while we might not realize it, we actually use models all the time in real life. Many of the things that we take as facts around us are actually models or approximations. But we don't usually treat them as models or approximations. We tend to ignore the quantities that we use have error bars, and we usually don't try to quantify how well our facts agree with observation or when they're valid and when they're not. So, in everyday life, we tend to assume certainty where it doesn't actually exist. It's useful if we can instead recognize the uncertainty in our models and learn to manage it. It's also important to be able to choose appropriate models and approximations for whatever situation is at hand. And the tools of science can help us do these things. So, there are basically two primary aims of this channel. The first is to show how science progresses. And the second is to demonstrate how the tools of science can be applied in everyday life. So let's take a look at a few of the details of each of these. Okay, so as far as how science progresses, 
there are some key concepts and skills that we would like to convey. First, to be able to understand new scientific findings in context with old ones. Second, to be able to understand statistics and margins of error in science reporting and understand that not all results are always going to agree with each other. And third, to understand that science isn't static and how new hypotheses come to replace old ones. As far as science tools in everyday life, it's important to have a basic understanding of how error bars arise, what they mean, and if somebody tells you that something is true, how to tell if that claim is justified. It's also important to be able to recognize approximations in everyday life and judge if they are valid for the case at hand. We also want to be able to recognize some ways in which statistics can mislead us and send us to the wrong conclusion. So in the cases where there's cherry-picked data, where the look elsewhere effect hasn't been taken into account, or where maybe we're failing to take into account improbable tail events. And then we also want to be able to take into account uncertainty in making decisions. Okay, so in order to cover those things, we're basically going to try to present uh, concepts and tools in terms of science and then show how they relate to life in general. This is going to require some knowledge of probability and statistics, so we're going to go through some of that as well. And we will try to present the concepts and the material at different levels of mathematical difficulty so that there is uh, something to be learned for a wide range of people. Okay, so I hope this video gives you some idea of what we will be covering on this channel. If you'd like to know when new videos are released, please hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions about this video or about any video on this channel, please feel free to ask it in the comments. And I hope you enjoyed the channel. Thank you.